I, about playing musical chairs in between courses. And don't be shy in between courses in jumping from table to table. There may be someone coming around, a very striking young woman, an ace media personality and award-winning broadcaster in Nigeria, Wolfi Samuel. She's coming around and, and taking sound bites and, and uh, your views on, on the evening and also on the uh, industry. Don't be shy. She won't put everything viral. She won't cause divorces. At the Oil and Gas Council forum put together by the Oil and Gas Council, we're getting to talk with lots of key industry practitioners, lots of stakeholders, of course, that have placed the oil and gas industry in Nigeria, West Africa, and Africa on the global map. And of course, Ernest is one of such persons. I'm humbled to be with you, sir. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. You look very nice. I spotted your wife somewhere around the side, looking all beautiful. You look nice too. Yes, it's good. I mean, we try to look as nice as we can. <laughs> Yeah. How does it feel to be here? How does it feel to be here? First time ever in Nigeria at the Oil and Gas Council. Yes, I think it's, um, it's quite exciting. I mean, I was at the, the conference in London, in uh, Paris, and um, this is the first time uh, they are coming to Nigeria to do this. I mean, by looking at the environment, you see that, you know, everywhere looks beautiful. So we are looking forward to an exciting dinner and also having a good interaction with uh, other members of the council. Now, Nigeria's economy is dwindling. A lot of people have opined, and of course, it's, it's the reality, the harsh reality. But the oil and gas sector has done as well over the years. What can we do to further strengthen the oil and gas sector, especially in Nigeria and in West Africa? Because when we're talking about diversifying our economy, that's a long-term plan for me. I think the oil and gas industry is a short-term plan for Nigeria, and of course, a long-term plan. It's both a long, long and short-term plan. So we just can't afford to, you know, nip it in the board. What can we do to strengthen it? No, you know, there's quite a lot of things you need to do just to strengthen, I mean... One of the things we need to do is actually, you know, create an environment that will um, enable a lot of other people to invest in Nigerian oil and gas. I mean, bringing investment into the country. Because as a matter of fact, you, you, you will agree with me that if, you know, the environment is, is good, there's good security, I mean, people will come in and invest. And when they invest, the oil and gas, uh, you know, business will um, great, you know, grow bigger in Nigeria. Yes, that's what we are. One last question I want to ask you. Outfit is really nice, well put together, and of course I spotted your wife over there, like I said, she was looking very... I mean, no, no way, I'm used to it. I mean, I dress like this every day, so I always, I mean, just a few minutes, because I know, I know my wardrobe very well, you know, and I know how to combine the colors. I do hope you have a great time. Thank you very much.
your sea legs. Yes. Still here at the oil and gas council firm put together by the oil and gas council and we have Tabo right here. He is a CEO but of course we get to meet him. Hello, how do you do? I'm very well and yourself? I'm very well, thank you. So how does it feel to be here? Lots of interesting people dressed in the seats. Everyone is looking really excited and happy. How does it feel to be here? Well, I'm happy to be in Nigeria for one simple reason. There's lots of oil in Nigeria. That's what we're looking for. So I'm happy to be part of the team. Uh, that will discuss some of the strategies to overcome the low oil price. Beautiful. Now you're here for this event. The question I want to ask you is, if you had an opportunity to change something about Nigeria's oil and gas sector, I don't know if you're very familiar with that in Nigeria and of course in Africa, what would it be? Well, I think you need to work closely with the private sector. For example, the NNPC, they have issues with the refineries. I think they need to do partial privatization. I think that is going to unlock a lot of value because private sector, public sector, nice combination. So I think uh, partial privatization of some of the NNPC assets will help. Thank you very much. Okay, it's been you. nice talking to you. Thank you. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm very well. Good to meet you. Good nice to meet you. What can I do for you today? Okay, tell me how it feels to be here first of all. That's what you can do for me. <laughs> Tired, long day, but excited. <laughs> It's been great actually and so we're here meeting with people from all over the world that have come to Nigeria talking oil and gas talking the energy sector so we talk gas we talk power we talk oil we talk upstream we talk downstream great now your outfit is really amazing you look cool and nice in this not too overstated but if there was one particular outfit you never wear to a dinner networking event like this what would it be shorts <laughs> I got it <laughs> okay now looking at Nigeria looking at Africa how do you think we can further strengthen our oil and gas sector I think the oil and gas sector is mature in Nigeria. It's been here for a very, very long time. But one of, and it's been moving a lot more towards the indigenous part. What you now need to do are put those kind of the laws and policies that will help the industry rejuvenate. How long did it take you to put your outfit together? Ah, this one. Uh, just a few minutes. <laughs> a couple of minutes. <laughs> I do hope you have a great time. And you too. How long did it take you to put your outfit? It took me like an hour, 30 minutes. Ah, thank you. You're fast, man. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you very much.